Hi everyone, welcome to Memes Review. Basically, try to affirm your knowledge and make sure you get the concepts by looking at memes and thinking if, you know, if they're funny. And if you think they're funny and you also understand the underlying meme, you probably get the concept. All right, so let's get started on generative adversarial networks. Welcome, or GANs as they're more fondly known as. G-A-N is their acronym, and we'll be going over every single word here, generative adversarial and networks. As you know, your generator learns from a noise vector Z, and this is just random values in a vector, and it's expected to generate these really realistic faces that you see here on the right. That's the generator's job, and it is hard, as you can imagine. This seems hard. To go from pure noise, randomness, to something very structured and realistic looking. But it gets help. The generator gets some help. And it gets help from its opponent, actually. And this is where the discriminator comes in. Or perhaps you can call it an adversary. And so this is where the word generative comes from and adversarial comes from in generative adversarial networks. All right. So the generator gets help from the discriminator, its adversary. And if you've seen Queen's Gambit, which is a show on Netflix where a girl named Beth Harmon here on the left learns how to play chess over time and becomes a, an amazing chess player at the end. But in the beginning, she's learning chess for the first time. So this is iteration zero where she's the generator perhaps and the discriminator is her opponent, which is actually her teacher slash it's actually the janitor, but he does teach her initially how to play chess. So GAN training is very much like playing chess in the sense that you are going against an opponent who makes you get better over time because you learn their moves. And by the end, she is a world-class champion, really amazing chess master. So this is her best iteration where she does defeat a chess grandmaster at the end. All right, so the discriminator, the opponent, the adversary also gets help because it might sound uh, hard not to, and it actually gets help from seeing the correct answers. And at first glance, this might seem unfair, okay, because the discriminator gets to see the correct answers. Obviously, it seems like it's basically cheating, uh, but it actually has to take the test before seeing those answers. But this means that it has to decide when it sees these random images, whether it's real or fake, before it's told what the answer is. So the discriminator is kind of stressing out about which image is real, which image is fake when it sees, sees a certain example. And, you know, it's not that great in the beginning. So it's not quite sure what the answer is uh, because it's never seen a correct answer before. At the very beginning, the discriminator really has no idea what it's doing and it gets better after seeing some answers. And the discriminator's job is to try to get 100% on this test every single time uh, before it gets to see the answers. So it wants to squeeze out every little bit and get 100%. Meanwhile, the generator's goal as an adversary, as an opponent, is the opposite. And the generator's goal is to get the discriminator to get a 0% on that test. So it wants to fool the discriminator somehow. And so the generator does that by studying the opponent's moves, by studying the discriminator's moves and understanding, you know, what has the discriminator guessed on its images. So the generator produces some fake stuff and sees how the discriminator is answering on its test and uses that as feedback to try to, you know, figure out some things that might fool them. So here is uh, Beth Harmon from, from the show Queen's Gambit, studying the moves of different opponents, of past opponents, of past, um, chess players and going through the motions of what, what they're doing. And so ultimately the generator wants to fool the discriminator. And so a fool discriminator will think that the fake image is actually real. And maybe even that the real image is fake. All right, so more realistically for a setback, it or zero, the discriminator actually has no idea what they're doing. <laughs> in the show, the person is more knowledgeable in chess than she is, but here, in this setting, at the very beginning, neither player knows anything until the discriminator starts to see some correct answers and the generator gets that back as feedback because they're looking at what the discriminator is doing and assessing on its fake image and then they both get better over time. So then maybe iter one looks like this after the discriminator gets some of that feedback around iter 10, you know, a few more iters out, both of them get better until at the very end, perhaps you have your best iteration where you would want your generator. 
And actually the place where you want your discriminator is to be in the stressed out place. It's not for your discriminator to be really amazing at the outset or really amazing always because then your generator never gets feedback back. So you actually want to keep both networks on their toes and specifically the discriminator because the discriminator has an easier job. And so you want the discriminator to be a little bit stressed out all the time. And so realistically, what the discriminator's job will look like is basically starting with having no clue and getting fooled every now and then, then having a clue, but still getting fooled every now and then, having many clues, still getting fooled though, and having all the clues and also just still getting fooled. So you want to keep the discriminator on its toes. And the reason why we want this is because at the end of the day, the generator is the main character, the protagonist of the story, just like in The Queen's Gambit in that Netflix show. The generator is the one that we care about the most and that we want to train to this amazing state because ultimately we want to generate these images from those noise vectors. All right, so that covered generative and adversarial and how those two networks interact. So more about the network components, what is this network? And indeed it is a neural network. You will be going over these modules this week. And I, I would say the review can be pretty useful. Probably shouldn't change this person's mind about that. <laughs> it can be pretty useful, especially if you're a little bit fuzzy, but of course feel free to skip over it if you feel comfortable. And so networks certainly refers to neural networks. And these are all the different components that you will be reviewing that are relevant to GANs. And I think the only component that might not be review in this section is transpose convolutions. So once you've learned a bit about how transpose convolutions work and uh, you, might, you might have a general sense of what that is based on the name, then this meme might make a bit more sense to you where once you're trying to avoid artifacts, you actually should not go down the route of using transpose convolutions. Instead, use upsampling plus a convolutional layer. And there is a very nice distill pub article that goes into detail about why that is. And it's highly visual, so I really love it. So that basically covers why these models are called GANs, generative adversarial networks. You generate something through an adversarial mechanism between these two networks, neural networks. And so a bit about the next module. So the discriminator does get help from seeing the correct answers. This seems unfair as a reminder. This seems unfair because if you imagine this as a task of modeling pizzas, the discriminator's job is to tell a pepperoni pizza from a veggie pizza, for example. It's just all it needs to say is, you know, whether this is pepperoni or veggie. Meanwhile, the generator needs to model all pizzas ever. Like basically it needs to be able to model what every single possible pizza might look like. And that's really hard. As you can imagine, there are some really weird pizzas out there like this, I don't know, seafood lobster pizza with literally the lobster on it. And also if you're familiar with the popular meme, non pizza with left beef, my God, like how would you, how would you possibly know how to model that? Um, but anyways, the generator is in charge of modeling the entire distribution of, of pizzas out there, including, including the wonky ones and the edges and not just telling apart different types. Okay. So a huge part of making the discriminator basically stressed out the whole time and at the right level with the generator, even though it has an easier job is to make its job harder. And so a lot of the work in GAN literature is actually, how do we make the discriminator's job harder? How do we restrict it from learning too fast? How do we, you know, make sure that it doesn't see too much, blah, blah, blah. Or how do we boost the generator as well? And so one thing that you'll be exploring in the next module is that the generator here is like, first I drew this and the discriminator here says, well, it sucks because I can tell it's fake. And then the generator says, I'm working on it. And the discriminator says, I learned way faster, which is probably true because it's easier task. And the generator says, you're not one Lipschitz continuous. All right. So <laughs> a lot to unpack here. You probably get all of them, except for maybe the last one. And the last one is really touching on one Lipschitz continuity, which you'll see with the Wasserson GAN module. So that will be restricting the discriminator in some sense. And the generator here is, of course, criticizing the discriminator for not being one Lipschitz continuous. All right, and that's a wrap. I hope this helped solidify some of your knowledge or helped, you know, suggest where you might want to revisit or review some things.